الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لحبة في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى سيس في كتاب الكريم إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with Him. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلَكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ And He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. Or He forgives other than that. أَحَبِتِ فِي اللَّهِ Avoid shirk at all costs. And this holy month of Ramadan, free your ibadah from shirk. Make sure you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek His favor, to seek His reward, to gain taqwa Allah azza wa jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Kutiba ya alladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba alladheena min qablakum la'alukum tattakoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you, similar to the way it's been prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you will receive, uh, in order that you will gain taqwa you will gain taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning that you will adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how you gain taqwa, and this is a part of taqwa. And avoid those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. That's taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what we want to get, and that comes from ibadat Allah. Mukhlis, tukun mukhlis, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, without associating partners with Him. So when you pray, pray to Allah. When you fast, fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And encourage your children, encourage your family, encourage your relatives to make sure that they're not sharing in, this, in these great forms of ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not distributing their ibadah with, uh, and, and sharing it with anyone else. That meaning that they're not worshiping anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله تعالى أنا أغنى شركائم عن الشرك من عمل عملا أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشركه رواه مسلم أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه said that I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that Allah the Almighty said I am the most self sufficient uh, and free of shirk, free of in, uh, of of of, in, of being in need of shirk. Whoever does a deed, and they associate, uh, they commit shirk in it, with me, or other than me, meaning they worship along with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, someone else, or they worship someone else altogether. Taraktuhu wa shirkuhu. I have left him and his association in, in, in uh, shirk, his polytheism, his act of polytheism. Ahabatifillah, some of the benefits we gain from those, uh, from the ayat in that hadith, is that one of the ways in which a person commits shirk, because a lot of people don't really realize that, is duhul or riya fi ibadat, is that riya enters into your worship. So if you're fasting, and you do it to show off in front of the people, well, then you've sh you have committed an act of shirk. Meaning you have done the, the minor shirk, which is very dangerous, a very serious sin, and it will nullify that act of worship that you did that, uh, committed that shirk in. Another benefit we gain from this, uh, from the, from this ayat in this hadith is it shows us the the wickedness of riya, you know, of of showing off, and encourages us to avoid it, and that it is the minor shirk because it's a wasila, it's a means that a, a servant or a slave can fall into the major shirk, and this is one of the 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 wabit, or one of the criterion that some of the ulama define ma minor shirk as. They say anything that is a means to major shirk is minor shirk. 
So that's there. Some of the ulama they use that as a babet, as a criterion. That's how they define minor shirk. Any act of worship that is a means to the major shirk is minor shirk. That is a babet that some of the ulama use for discerning what is minor shirk. And another benefit we gain from this, these nasus ahabit fillah, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive the person who dies upon shirk. Inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yushraka bih. Verily, Allah does not forgive the one who commits shirk with him. Wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik la man yasha. But he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of the shirk, that forgives all of the sins, except shirk, meaning a habitifillah. Although some of the salaf held the view that this is uh, this includes the minor shirk. But this means that a person who dies on the major shirk means they've done an act that takes them out of the fold of Islam, Allah will not forgive them. And as I said, some of the salaf used to uh, held the belief that that this included that this was mutlaq you know this this uh, was in general this uh, this nas, this nas was general in the law la yaghfiru and yushraka bi verily law doesn't forgive that you commit shirk with him so they say the shirk here is general meaning that it is inclusive of major and minor shirk meaning the person who dies even on minor shirk will not be forgiven ahabatullah what we learn from this, the, the shahid, is to beware all the shirk, to stay away from that ashkal, that, that fitan, and that danger. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us and protects us from every kind of shirk and forgives us for our major sins and our minor sins, and blesses us to fast this holy month of Ramadan and gain benefit from it.